What's up, y'all? Welcome back to Carbon Scoring, the best place for comics, history, and action figures. And we have another Marvel Legends mystery box for you today. And I cannot tell you how excited I am about this box. I have been waiting for this one for a while. And I'm going to go ahead and give you a sneak peek because you are in for an absolute treat today. We are going to be going through some movie figures, and we're talking early movie figures before the MCU. Now, if you're a longtime fan of the channel, and if you've been watching my videos, you know that I have what I call my secret lounge. It is a converted wine cellar where I display my favorite figures from 40 years of collecting. Now, I've had to pare that down, and I can't display everything, and that's why we have these mystery box videos. But the Secret Lounge that you see is actually Secret Lounge 2.0, because my original Secret Lounge looked more like this. It was really dark, it was really grungy, and because part of this wine cellar basement is actually underground, I had a real problem with water, and some of the figures got moldy. It just was nasty down there. And so a few years back, I had to gut the whole thing. I had to take everything out, redid all the cabinets, all the lighting. And in the process, I had to pack up all of the displays that were down there and move them to storage. And one of those displays was my movie figure display. And when I redid the Secret Lounge and brought everything back, I really didn't have a shelf for these figures. And so here they are in this box. And we are about to go through them, and there are going to be some incredible figures in here. So we're going to take our time, really enjoy some old, early 2000s figures, some great Toy Biz figures. Let's get going. Let's crack this thing open and see what we've got. Oh! <laughs> Oh my gosh, where do we even start? Uh, well, let's start with Blue-Eyed Benjamin, everybody's favorite figure, The Thing. So this is Toy Biz's six-inch Thing figure from the very first Fantastic Four movie. And of course, this was, God, look at how good the sculpting is on that. First of all, from a distance, it just looks like The Thing. But then when you get up close, you realize... Yeah, that is the movie thing that is absolutely the actor Michael Chiklis. So, the actor who played the thing in the first in the, the first two Fantastic Four movies was named Michael Chiklis. At the time, he was most known for playing the Commish, which was a fairly popular, you know, TV series, but it turns out that Michael Chiklis was a huge comic book fan his entire life and actually a really really big fan of Ben Grimm, the thing. And I actually heard a rumor one time that he met Stan Lee at some kind of function and introduced himself as Ben Grimm. Said, you know, hey, Mr. Lee, my name's Ben Grimm, and I'm going to play the thing in, in the Fantastic Four movie. And this was years before it actually happened. So very, very cool. If you look right there on the back, you can see that it's got, like, holes. That's for a speaker. And I want to say that this guy, when you... When you slammed him, he had like a clobbering time sound. Let's let's see if it still works. Nah, that's what happens when you have a figure that's probably 15, 16 years old. Looks like the batteries have died on this one, but we may have to we may have to get into that battery space and crank it open. It would it would kind of make a crushing sound when you would hit it, but God, that's a great start. Look at that. The um the Thing costume, Chickless apparently was a big stickler. He wanted The Thing to be live action. He didn't want it to be CGI. And so he would spend three hours a day getting into a 60-pound suit to portray The Thing. So that's the kind of dedication that we want. Uh, let's, let's stick with a Fantastic Four action figure. So here is the Invisible Woman in her obviously translucent form from the first movie. I think I probably have another Jessica Alba Fantastic Four figure in here. I have lots to say about that, but this is nice. I mean, this is certainly, you can tell with that hairstyle that that's definitely Jessica Alba and she's wearing the FF costume, but that's a nice translucent figure there. Uh, okay, well, let's, let's, we'll stick with the Fantastic Four movies. So this is 
again, blue-eyed Benjamin. And there's that head sculpt of Michael Chiklis, and it absolutely does look just like him. So I think some of the later figures from the first Fantastic Four line actually had really, really low distribution. I know one of the ones that did was the Johnny Storm, where he's like lighting up a mailbox and stuff. We actually saw that in one of our earlier mystery boxes, looking at some of these early Marvel movie uh, figures. But I want to say this is one of the ones that had a, a really, really low run as well. So it's got an action feature. And when you press that, there he is, the Thing head sculpt. So this is what happens. This is the transformation when the Fantastic Four are bombarded by the cosmic rays and changed from good old Ben Grimm into the Thing. So cool. And this, I mean, this thing's big. I mean, this is a, a hefty, hefty action figure. Nice. Um, let's, let's, let's do Iron Man. So, so, th so this obviously is an MCU movie. This is from the second Iron Man film because that's Don Cheadle's face sculpt. I want to say that this is a Diamond Select figure. Really, really nice detailing of this. Pretty good articulation for Diamond Select. It's got enough. You know, it definitely has enough for what you need. He he should have the top of his mask somewhere later in the box. We'll probably find that. But that is going to go with Tony Stark. And, of course, he's missing one of his shoulder things. That's hopefully in the box as well. But, again, nice Robert Downey Jr. sculpt. Really cool with the face mask up. This is definitely from the second Iron Man movie because uh, it's got the triangular Unibeam there instead of the circular one that was what we saw with the first Iron Man movie. So, very cool stuff. I don't remember what year I redid the Secret Lounge, but obviously we had gotten into the beginnings of the MCU because these movie figures were down there. Now, let's dig into some of the figures that really were the beginning of Marvel's resurgence at the movie theaters, and that is from the first X-Men. So here is Professor X. He has his like plastic clear wheelchair, which I think was a plot device so that Magneto couldn't, you know, use his powers of magnetism on it. But look at that. That is a pretty doggone decent Patrick Stewart head sculpt. Now remember, these the first X-Men movie came out in 2002 or 2003. Uh it, it you know, it was way back in the day when when uh when that that came out or no did it came out it came out in 2000 and so this is before companies like Gentle Giant and then followed by Toy Biz and Hasbro were able to do facial recognition software and then use that to sculpt these tiny little figures so this is like hand sculpted like some uh, a toy artist designed and sculpted this, and then it went into mass production. And I think it's really impressive how well they did with the sculpts. Now, there is one thing about this Professor X figure, figure that I absolutely love, and that is this. So you pull him out of his wheelchair, and his legs do not work. Now, this is not like a new HasLab Sentinel joke where the knees are loose. This figure came this way. It actually came out of the pocket, out of the package, with non-functioning legs. How sweet is that? I mean, it's just, it's just a little nod to the character, but that's the kind of detail, again, that Toy Biz would put into these figures. So, you can have your Professor X figure, but he's going to be in that wheelchair because he absolutely will not stand up without it. Fantastic. So, if that's Professor X, here is Magneto. And again, pretty good head sculpt. You know, pretty decent. Good paint wash, good app on that. Really cool how they managed to do his sort of half cape. And this cape does have a wire in it. So down here at the bottom, you can, you know, really get it to form and sculpt and, and wrap around him. Now, these figures were, if this was 2000, this was, this was maybe at the very beginning of Marvel Legends. You can see they don't have ball jointed shoulders. They don't have double elbows or double knees. There's actually minimal articulation, no rockers at the ankles. They've just got T-hips. So these figures were much more about the sculpt and the accuracy and the movie likeness than they were about articulation at that point. But that's okay. 
Let's keep going with some X-Men figures. Here we have Cyclops, played by James Marston. Now, this may be from the second movie. He's got a little bit more kind of going on with his costume. And he also has a little bit more advanced articulation. You can see he's got um, ball hips, ball shoulders. Really cool head sculpt. And it's got this old plastic on it that I'm sure I kept on there so as not to lose the goggles. But those are, those eyes, I think it, I think they're translucent back there. Um, I wonder, does he, oh, yep, look. So he has a light up feature. So again, we're going to test it. No, 15 years is too long for these batteries. So he doesn't light up. But back in the day, you could press that on his back and his eyes would light up. And because of the visor, it would really light his entire head up. So that is nice. Cyclops, leader of the X-Men. Let's grab another X-Man. All right. So Nightcrawler. Again, uh, Alan Cushing. Brilliant, brilliant casting. Uh, he was, you know, straight off of uh, Broadway where he'd been a star in Chicago when he signed on to do this movie. This would have been from, I guess, the second X-Men movie as well. Again, more advanced sculpting, more advanced articulation, and just a really nice Nightcrawler. And, of course, one of the things that Toy Biz always did so well with their Nightcrawler is they gave us a bendy, posable tail. So there is a wire in here so that you can get your Nightcrawler's tail into some cool, cool looks. But look at how great, look at how great that sculpt is. It even, you remember he had like the scars on his face? You can actually see those in the sculpt of this head. You can see all of those little lines that are carved in. I mean, that is an incredible amount of detail for a six inch figure. Beautiful. Love it. Along those same lines, here we have the lovely Anna Paquin playing Rogue. Again, nice, nicely done. Very little articulation through the, the hips here. She just basically has a bend at that area. But that's not really what it's about. It was much more about the facial recognition and, and looking looking like the actress playing Rogue, the young Anna Paquin in those first first X-Men movies. And I love that they got the, the Rogue stripe in there, that her hair stripe came through. Nice little cloth scarf that goes with her. It's a solid figure. And she's tiny. You know, I mean, this is a dedicated sculpt just for this figure. You know, it's not like they could use this sculpt on 10 other mass-produced figures. That's, again, that's the kind of level of detail that Toy Biz was going for. Yeah, here we go. Here's the James Marston Cyclops from the first movie. So you can tell the difference. You can see how much more, how much farther they'd gone with articulation as they moved forward. Again, here you've just got single, single joint hips, single joint elbows, but a good sculpt. And I'm hoping again that down in the bottom of that box are his uh, goggles. Because, yep, he was going to light up too. All right, we're going to try it. No luck. Oh, well. Not bad. Not bad. Later figure. So this is from X-Men Last Stand. And this is Kelsey Grammer, Frasier, as the Beast. Now, you know, I, I, I get that casting. The Beast is an intellectual and, you know, Frazier was, you know, a psychiatrist and kind of an intellectual. And it does. I mean, it really does kind of look like, you know, Kelsey Grammer, our, our good friend Frazier, as, as the Beast. This was when Hasbro had first taken over the Marvel Legends line in 2007. And there was a lot of criticism of some of those early figures, partly because they just didn't do a great job with paint wash and paint apps. And you can see that this is really, there's a little bit of wash on there, which is better than I really remembered. Uh, but we'll see some more figures that came out around that same time. As a matter of fact, let's grab a couple. Here is Colossus from X-Men Last Stand. It's really good. It's got a great look of the metallic. Although here's where they could, here's where those early Hasbro Marvel Legends figures could have used a little bit more paint wash to get that metallic look to come out a little better because it just really didn't, didn't stand out much there. But improved articulation and still a really solid Really solid sculpt on that. Um, Juggernaut was also from that. Now, this is what I'm talking about. When I'm talking about early Hasbro, this is kind of what we think of. So they made an effort. He's got some chest hair, 
but look at how blank these upper arms are. You know, he's got some forearm hair here, but then there's nothing on the bicep and on the deltoid. So you're just totally missing that. There's a real lack of depth because of the lack of paint wash to that facial sculpt. Although it's pretty accurate with the movie um, for what that gets you. You know, X-Men 3 was maybe not the greatest film. I uh, the, you know, the first X-Men movie was such a revelation. And then they, you know, the second X-Men was pretty good. And then the third X-Men kind of, it uh, wasn't that great. And, uh, you know, trying to cram Juggernaut in there looking like this is maybe one of the reasons for that. I want to say, yes, I found her. So this was also from X-Men Last Stand. So one of the things about X-Men Last Stand, well, let's go back. One of the things about the first X-Men movie was it was a completely original film. The story was brand new. They weren't stealing directly from any of the, the comic stories. Whereas they did more of that with the second and the third X-Men movie. And with that third one with X-Men Last Stand, you know, they really tried to get into the Dark Phoenix saga. And so this is Famke Jameson as basically Dark Phoenix. Now, if part of the Phoenix powers are to make the utterly stunning and beautiful Famke Jameson a hideous looking person, well, then those powers are working really well. Because, oh boy, that is just not great. And I think a lot of it is the paint on the eyes. You know, when you get into profile and a little bit of shadow, it actually looks like Famke, but oh, yikes, that is so bad. Oh, good. Here we go. Here is Boobalicious Famke Jameson from the first X-Men film. So, you know, it may be, you know, this one may actually be a little bit more accurate, but this one is certainly more attractive. And Again, these were marketed to kids. These toys were. They were marketed to children. And so this was the first version of Famke that came out. And obviously she never looked like this in the movie. And so they actually had to redo this figure with her zipper. You know, at least they had like a top on underneath and they uh, kind of helped to bring down the uh, boobalicious factor on this. But that's maybe the more valuable one, the top open Jean Grey Marvel Girl Famke Jameson, whose superpowers are fairly obvious. Now, why on earth can we not talk about this guy? How are we going to do the X-Men without six foot two Hugh Jackman? I love Hugh Jackman. I love his commitment to playing Wolverine. I thought he did an unbelievable job and clearly was dedicated to the role because he played Wolverine in 743 different films, but he was too tall and, and that's not his fault, you know, but it, it's, uh, it's the only criticism. The only criticism I have is that Hugh Jackman grew to be six foot two inches tall, which is over a foot or about a foot taller than how tall Wolverine should have been. But here's a great version of Wolverine. This one looking at the ball jointed, Shoulders could be from the X-Men 2 line, but pretty good facial sculpt. I mean, we're spoiled. These new Marvel Infinity series and these new figures of Old Man Logan and, and, the, and the movie ones are just so good. But think about the fact that this thing is almost 20 years old and it still holds up. So we're not, we're not going to blast that too much. Uh, okay, here is... That may be the first movie, Wolverine, probably so, just based on the articulation. Not quite as good of a facial sculpt, but you know who it is. I mean, you can clearly tell that that's Wolvie. Doesn't have a lot going on with the hips. He's got his claws. And actually, it's kind of remarkable these claws have stayed pretty well intact, even, even shoved down in this box. So, nice Wolverine figure. We got more X-Men. Let's switch gears a little bit. Actually, let's switch gears to this. Who remembers... Ben Affleck as Daredevil. Holy cow. So this figure actually was in the Marvel Legends line. And I think it had probably been sculpted at some time previously because it certainly did not meet the Marvel Legends level of articulation. I mean, you've got these simple shoulders here, very, very simple hips. He's got a little bit of rocker going on at the ankle, but it is a really nice Daredevil head sculpt. And I think you can see Ben Affleck's chin in that. I definitely think you can you can pick up on a little bit of 
the future Batman there. Uh, I'm just going to have to find a figure of Jennifer Lopez to go with him and let them go elope somewhere. Excellent. Ah, and while we're talking one and done, yeah, baby, always bet on black. Wesley Snipes coming in as Blade. Now, that first Blade movie, I think, came out in, like, 1997. This figure, obviously, was much after that and benefited from really great sculpting. Look at how cool Blade's hair is. He's even got, like, the detail in the back of his head. He comes with his sword, slips down into his trench coat. Here's an example of some of the mold that happened down in the secret lounge when, when things were bad down there before I got the dehumidifier, but sweet blade figure. God, look at how that flat top comes straight to a point. Dang, Wesley, that is strong. That is really strong. Let's switch gears again. Let's come back to the Fantastic Four. And here is Welsh actor, oh, please forgive me, Owen Gruffeld. Never going to be able to pronounce that, but actually I really thought he was pretty strong casting for Reed Richards. As a matter of fact, I thought they did great with three out of the four castings for, for the Fantastic Four, and I'll get into the ones that didn't hit here in just a minute, but great figure. He's got his gray little area there in the corner. He came with a ton of different accessories. I think that the uh, the arms come off so that you can add some of his stretchy parts. You can sadly see how some of this black plastic does have a little bit of that mold from, from damage of being down in the original Secret Lounge, but Solid figure, good casting. Now, when you want to talk about great casting, how about Chris Evans as the Human Torch? Now, this figure holds up. Look at this thing. This is this is honestly as good as good looking a, a Fantastic Four Human Torch figure as any of the ones that we've gotten since. He's you know he he lit up as well. I can see the the battery pack, and there's the oh yes, <laughs> give it to me, Torchy. Yeah, baby, look at that. It still works. Oh, that is so cool. That is so awesome. But what I think really makes this figure are all of these flame effects that, that come across his entire body, but don't distract. Like some of the flame effects that we've gotten on newer Human Torch figures are a different color. And so they really kind of take away from the overall look of the figure. Not so much with this one. This one, it really blends in and it looks like a man on fire particularly he looks like a man on fire when you do this. <laughs> oh, one more word about Chris Evans. He was perfect as Johnny Storm. He was arrogant. He was cocky. He was young. He was a hothead. And then this same actor became the living embodiment of humble servant leadership and patriotism in Captain America. We should all tip our cap to Chris Evans as being one of the greatest actors uh, in, 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 current, in the business currently, but certainly somebody who made the perfect portrayal of two different incredible superheroes. Did you hear that, buddy? Did you hear that, Affleck? Chris Evans was the perfect portrayal of two different superheroes. Think about that. Affleck. Let's stick with Fantastic Four. Man, this is a neat figure. I do love when they do a part translucent, part solid, invisible woman, and this one is done to perfection. Look at how, yes, you've got the translucent part here, goes all the way to the knee so that, you know, you only have to have that part in clear plastic, but look at how the paint apps on the leg allow for the invisibility effect to keep going. So they used translucent plastic on these legs and then painted them and the same thing with the arm see you can see through that arm it's got just a very thin layer of paint on it god that is beautiful i mean that is utterly fantastic what a great action figure but this is one of the ones that i have to fuss about jessica alba as susan storm look i love jessica alba i think that she is a lovely and talented actress and if you wanted to cast Jessica Alba as Susan Storm in the Fantastic Four movie, you should totally do that. But Jessica Alba has an olive complexion. She has dark eyebrows. She has dark eyes. And she has dark hair. I think that they should have left her as her natural, beautiful state instead of trying to give her this kind of shocking blonde hair because it just didn't work. 
it looks a whole heck of a lot better on this action figure than it looked on screen. It just, it was jarring. And yes, I know there are fanboys who would lose their mind if they cast or portrayed Susan Storm as a dark haired woman. But look, man, there's fanboys that are going to complain about just about anything. I think it would have been less jarring to have a dark haired but appropriately looking for the actress Susan Storm than it was to have a really great actress who just didn't quite fit the part. If you wanted Susan Storm to be blonde, you should have tabbed somebody with blonde hair or at least with the kind of complexion that matches blonde hair. When you have a, a lovely olive skinned actress, you can't make her look blonde and make it work. So mini rant over, fantastic figure, a little bit challenging casting, but wow, that that invisibility effect, we've never seen it done that well. That is really good. All right, let's head back to the, the world of Iron Man. So Iron Man 2, looks like from the Iron Man toy line. This is the six inch version of that. Here is Iron Man 1. And I know this one. This is definitely from the Iron Man toy line. And I got to tell you, that toy line was great. They busted out a bunch of really cool Iron Man figures. And I think it was part of the reason why that movie was so successful. The other part of the reason why that movie was so successful was because Robert Downey Jr. was utterly perfect to play Iron Man. And that was the most brilliant, incredible casting of all time. Let's move to Iron Man 2. So this is the uh, suit that he was wearing isn't this the suit he was wearing when he battled? No, this was the suit he was wearing when he battled Whiplash, because this is the one that came out of the suitcase, right, when they were when they were at the, the Grand Prix. So that's pretty cool. It looks like it kind of expanded out. It kind of has that Silver Centurion look. I'm sure that was what they were going for with that. Whereas this one, I don't know. Maybe, you know, this may be an Iron Man 3 figure. I don't know, but kind of cool. Sort of the reverse look, where the gold and the red are switched. I can't get too many Iron Men, even if it's the kind of Iron Patriot armor. So this was Rhodey in this, right, when they did the big kind of World's Fair kind of show with that. God, those are great paint apps too. Look at, look at how tight those lines are with that red, white, and blue. And I love the, the star effect right there in the center. Man, that's nice. That is good stuff. And then here is the Marvel Legends War Machine version of that. God, that has such a great mech vibe, like a great like Japanese mecha sort of look to those to those legs and to the arms. You know, whereas the Iron Man suits were much smoother and more sleek, that definitely has that kind of crunchy, squared off mech vibe. Good stuff, good figure. Really good. Nice detail on the back. Oh, that's right. This is cool. The uh, the Gatling gun actually can slide to either side. That's that's pretty choice. It definitely increases your posability with that. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, one more. Oh, yeah. So this was the Tony Stark. I'm sitting up on the donut place with my sunglasses on. Solid. I'm moping around, so I got to go get some donuts. Okay. Uh, let's switch films again. Who remembers this one? Basically, nobody. This is Thomas Jane as the Punisher. And, you know, he's, he's got a cool, like, cloth jacket that's got kind of sweet. He's got, like, a knife. He's got extra clips. He's got giant shell casings. It, it does resemble Thomas Jane, the actor who played the Punisher. Uh, I think they probably small made the, the Punisher logo there a little bit smaller so that it didn't interfere with the, the ab crunch, which is too bad because, man, that is about as classic a Punisher logo as you're ever going to see. I mean, that looks like something straight out of, you know, John Romita artwork right there. He came with a bunch of guns because Punisher... And I don't know, that's kind of cool. I actually never saw this movie and I doubt very many of you did either because nobody saw it. Um, here we go. First Avenger. Now this one, this one's huge. So this has to be a diamond select. I, I just can tell that it's like seven inches and it does have really, really great detailing. Look at that. That's a, 
That is a nice Captain America. Got got pretty decent articulation for a diamond select. He's got some ball jointed hips, and he does have limited motion ball jointed shoulders. But the reason why they're limited is because they really went all in on sculpting that chain mail up across there. Man, that's a nice figure. It's got a huge shiny shield, good sheen to it. Does look like Chris Evans underneath. A lot of paint details. Look at even how he's got the leather helmet underneath the hard mask. Man, that's nice. That is well done. Lots of folds in the clothing, plenty of accessories. Good stuff. And if you've got the first Avenger, then you need his evil half. Look at how cool this Hugo weaving Red Skull is. You know, obviously Red Skull. But when you get close up, that's definitely got that Hugo weaving look. Now, he's a little more limited. Well, he's got about the same articulation. Does have his cool German pistol there. Got that sweet black trench coat. That is good looking. And I think the two of these came with bases that combined together to have the uh, Tesseract on it. So, very choice. Again, let's get a little other look at that head sculpt all the way around because that is a nice red skull. Oh, yeah, remember he didn't really have ears. When he, when he was the Red Skull, because it's just a skull, right? And your ears are not part of your skull. So you can just kind of see where his ear holes would be. Man, I love it when they paid that much attention to the detail. That is just so good. Hey, looky here. Who's this? It appears to be Loki, and it appears to be another Diamond Select. And, man, that's another nice one. Remember, these toys are, they're over 10 years old. I mean, this is from the first Thor movie, and... What a really well done Loki figure. Lots and lots of articulation, lots of sculpting, nice flowing cape. He's got his pointy sticky thing that fits nicely in his hand and love those horns. Very Jack Kirby reminiscent to have those horns on there. Good stuff. Is there a Thor in here? Have we got a Thor floating around? Yeah, I've come back to it. All right, so let's get back to some X-Men figures. The first X-Men movie. And here he is, Ray Park, playing Toad. And does he do something? Has he got like a... Does he have a tongue flicking action? I think he does, because you can see that tongue coming out. Again, for those who don't remember, so this is the actor that played Toad was Ray Park. And you may know him from... Oh, wait a minute. Is it... No, it doesn't do that way. I thought I had it figured out. You may remember Ray Park from such movies as the uh, prequel movies because he played Darth Maul. So this is the same actor who played Darth Maul dressed up as Toad. Toad was the victim of perhaps the worst line of dialogue in the history of movies. Do you know what happens to a toad when it's struck by lightning? Same thing that happens to everything else. Yeah, that is just so bad. I, I, I can't believe that that made it through the editing process. So you can see they really have come a long way with facial, facial sculpting, but there's Toad. Um, oh no, we're going to save him. Uh, here's another 2007 early Hasbro. So this is Sabretooth from, I guess, Last Stand. Again, we gave Hasbro a hard time for paint wash, but I guess it's because they spent all their money on hair highlights. What the crap is going on with this? I mean, did, is Sabretooth angry because of what they did to him at the salon? Or is he angry because they left out his mustache? Because he still looks like a 60-year-old man with a gray mustache while he's trying to rock the, uh, the teenage blonde hair. I don't know. I have no idea because that makes no sense. And this is not a terrific action figure, but hey, it got made, so we'll we'll keep it. Uh, let's keep going with some X-Men and the lovely and talented Halle Berry. I like the fact that they went with the Storm power-up eyes where she doesn't have the irises. That's a that's a good effect. She she does something. Oh, here she's got a arm action with with that. Very, 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 very difficult to stand this figure when the hips are made to go into that position. Uh, be better. I don't think she came with like a flying base, but would have made a lot more sense because there is zero chance that you're going to get that figure to stand up with, with hips like that. But it does look like Halle Berry. 
All right, let's see if we got any more X-Men. Of course we do. We have Rebecca Romaine Stamos as Mystique. Again, very, very pre-posed in a contrapposto position. You're never going to get her to stand up. But, you know, a lot of detail. A lot of that kind of scaly sculpt all the way, all the way around. And, yep, they sold kids a blue naked lady. Good on them. They pulled it off. Um... I want to try and find, you can see there's other stuff. So, Dr. Doom. Dr. Doom was another just miss in the Fantastic Four movie. He, you know, it wasn't the actor's fault. I think it was the writer's fault. That character made no sense. And I know that there's tons of rumors that we're getting a new Fantastic Four movie. I kind of hope that they don't do Doom first. I'd like for them to do something else. Because it has proven that it's very difficult to get Victor Von Doom correct. He just... He just is a struggle, I think, in movies. Here is a really cool, I guess that's a bone clawed Wolverine. I want to say maybe, God, that doesn't look quite as much like Hugh Jackman. I'm sure one of you guys will help me in the comments to know where this is coming from. And by the way, if you uh, if you guys do enjoy these videos, please hit like and, and leave some comments because that's how YouTube knows to send these videos out to other people like us, other people that will help grow our community and, and continue to, to support the channel. So if you like it, hit like. I'd really appreciate it. Silver Surfer from the Rise of the Silver Surfer movie. This is in like a five-inch scale. So I think that this was kind of around the time when we were having like a petroleum crisis. And so the cost of plastic went way up because plastic is made from oil. And so the second Fantastic Four movie line were all like five inches in scale. And so that's why you've got this sort of small out of scale Silver Surfer. Now, it looks like a Silver Surfer surfboard base. Kind of cool. Another Doom. What the crap is going on with this? Ugh. All right, so it was movie time, and I'm a Marvel guy, but I've got to pay my respects to how incredible The Dark Knight was, and that movie was just so good, and so we have some examples of Batman figures, Christian Bale from The Dark Knight Returns, obviously one of the greatest ones is the brilliant, brilliant Heath Ledger and his role as the Joker. You know, every time I go back and watch that movie, I am creeped out all over again at the incredible portrayal that Heath Ledger had of the Joker. I, I really, there's a huge part of me that wishes they would just resign, just, just retire the character of the Joker because I don't believe it could be done better than what Heath Ledger did. But, you know, we have Harvey Dent. So right before he becomes... Two-Face, and man, that's a good Two-Face sculpt. Look at, let me get him in focus here. Harvey Dent, Two-Face. Harvey Dent, Two-Face. And I like that they went comic accurate with the way that the corners of his mouth are and the way that his eyeball sticks out. They even did it all the way down, kind of got the acid splosh down his, his suit coat. And what a nice touch to have the alternating color tie on him for this figure. Solid Harvey Dent. Bane. My wife has a huge crush on Tom Hardy, so I may have to keep this guy hidden in the box because Bane is crazy creepy. Do you have a little Catwoman? And this is nice. You know, it, the the it was cool how they did the goggles to come down, but then when they put them up, it created the look of Catwoman. So they actually got that pretty fantastic Julie Newmar-looking Catwoman. If you guys are young... And, like, if you're under 40, really younger than that, and you do not know who Julie Newmar is as Catwoman, do yourself a favor when you finish this video, go to Google and Google Julie Newmar Catwoman, and you will be absolutely amazed. Now, Anne Hathaway was really great, but there is no Catwoman. Like, maybe Eartha Kitt, but, yeah, Julie Newmar was the deal. Scarecrow, another nice sculpt. Really, really creepy head sculpt. Look at that. God, that's the stuff that... Nightmares are made of, just as you would imagine. A couple more Batman. Not bad. Not bad. And one more Heath Ledger Joker. Doesn't have quite as much of the paint app on it as the one that we looked at earlier. I think that this was probably the first figure that came out, but still pretty cool. 
Now we've got some extra stuff down here. We've got some of the, the Iron Man parts that we were missing. Oh, yes. We have Cyclops' visor, just what I was hoping for. Very good. But let us finish. Oh, there's the faceplate for War Machine. Let us finish with this absolute work of art, Space Ghost. Yes, I know. He's not Marvel. He's not DC. He's not from a movie. But in the mid-90s, Space Ghost had his own talk show on Cartoon Network called Space Ghost Coast to Coast. And a tiny little toy company, I believe it was Toy Nami, uh, from a, a sculpt designed by the sculpting studio Art Asylum, released this figure in, in 2000. And he was vo voted by Toy Fair Magazine to be the figure of the year and with really good cause. This thing is like candy. I mean, the colors that white with the red, the black, and the yellow, and that incredible fate Space Ghost head sculpt. But the thing that I love about this figure so much, and I don't know why we don't see it used more, is the neck articulation. So he's got a huge ball joint neck right here, and it allows for this figure to get into some of the most awesome poses without losing the lines. You know, part of Space Ghost's look is that thick neck that his head just kind of extends right down into his neck. And the sculptors at Art Asylum figured out a way to give us the posability without losing the look of the sculpt. Oh, it's so good. And I mean, this is early, man. This is 2000. This is when ball jointed shoulders were a big freaking deal. And this figure actually came with a little desk with a coffee mug and some cards. He, uh, you know, he could sit in a little chair at his desk so that you could do your Space Ghost Coast to Coast TV show. So cool. I, he didn't, there's no other place to put him in my display. So he ended up with the movie figures, but really, really happy with what we've got going on with Space Ghost there. So I hope you guys enjoyed this mystery box. This is a good one. There was some great, amazing stuff in this one. If you liked this one, you'll really love these. So check out some of the other mystery box videos. You will not be disappointed. As always, give us a like, give us a comment. Tell us what we're doing right. Tell us what we're doing wrong. And hey, if you want to be a part of all of this going forward, if you want to be one of the over 1 million views on carbon scoring, Go ahead and hit subscribe and join join our team where we are bringing you the very best in comics history and action figures. Thanks, guys. See you soon.